Thancred stares quietly into the distance. He seems calm and assured. His easy stance born of confidence rather than false bravado. Urian J glances your way, his expression hesitant. You can see the struggle as he agonizes over the words he wishes to say. Yashtola meets your gaze with a strained smile. You seem to recall her wearing the self-same expression when speaking with Lys and Runar. Huh. Alphano is lost in thought, his eyes downcast. There is, however, no sign of the self-doubt which once assailed him at the falling snows. It's as if the falling snows was actually, like, legitimately named that. <laughs> Reen appears to be brooding over her choices, her faintly trembling hands betraying her mounting trepidation. Hmm. That's really cool. They've never done that where it just you're just reading kind of um, their expressions and stuff as opposed to actually talking to them. Shadowbringers. Oh, God. <laughs> this is just so good. Alize appears to have made her decision. Do you remember that talk we had atop the tower in Mordsuk? I'm still of the same mind now as I was then. I don't abandon you. You don't abandon me, and together we make a difference in this fight. There's always hope if we look for it. I saw it again and again as you tore those veils of light from the sky. If we keep taking that next step forward, there's a chance we'll find a way to save you. So no matter how long it takes, or how much it hurts, you can count on me to keep on balking. <sighs> Alize, getting me all emotional. And it's so amazing, uh, everybody else not saying anything, but she does. And do they continue to not say anything? Yeah. Vothri spoke of the disaster we would bring upon our own heads, the ceaseless conflict. Imagine how he would sneer to see what's become of the first, not to mention your perilous predicament. And yet, who can deny the fire your deeds have ignited in people's hearts? You achieved what my logic and ideals never could uniting disparate peoples under the banner of hope and common purpose. Without you, that giant Talos would never have raised its head. Yeah, and that's something I thought at the time, and then I think just cutscenes kept going or whatever, and I forgot about it afterward. Um, but that reassurance in knowing what you're doing is worth it, the sacrifices you're making are worth it, when, again, what you're doing inspires everybody else that had basically given up, you know, to get back to trying again. Again, you know, thinking about everybody getting together, you know, to build the Talos and everything. I have borne witness to many such miracles at your side and would do so again. This is but another obstacle in the road. So come, let us travel it. Drag me through wonder and danger. And as you are wont to do, I shall endeavor not to slow you down. Oh, cool. Are we going to end up talking to everybody? I kind of hope so. As well thou knowest, if we are to usher Emmet Selk unto his rest... We must needs bind his Asian soul and then shatter it with overwhelming force. Yeah, and I forgot about that. 
the white aura site that we've been carrying around this whole time. I was kind of surprised when we got it, like it was so early on. And I was like, do we use this before in itself? But I guess not. The former task requireth orosite, and such have I prepared. Upon the exarch's asking, no less, though twas ever mine intent to provide said boon. The future whence our noble friend doth hail is a world fallen to Asian artifice, and he would not see such grim history repeated. In a sense, Emmet Selk's destruction will be the culmination of the Exarch's efforts, a reward for all he hath endured these many years. Yet even as thou strideth into the jaws of peril, forget not but that his fondest wish, and that of many others besides, is to see thee survive unto the morrow. Tis in pursuit of that happy of that happiest of outcomes that I do pledge to remain at thy side. Our time in the first has been a never-ending succession of trials, as arduous as our path in the source ever was. Yet through all our journeys together, through that deep and foreboding wood, you have helped me to stay true to my convictions. Thus would I return the favor. Do as your heart decrees, without hesitation or regret, and that is all I will say on the matter. Of course it's going to be Reen last. And I think I, I recall a certain line that's in that conversation. I think. Well... This has put everyone in a solemn mood, hasn't it? <laughs> Leave it to uh, Thancred to pick it up a little bit. Honestly, we're not even sure this will be the end of it. But I suppose we should speak our minds when we have the opportunity. You taught me that much in Amarain. So forgive me this moment of sentiment, Lavenza. By dragging me into this sorry mess, you've given me the chance to think and act as I should have. For Reen's sake. Words cannot express how much this has changed my life, or how grateful I am for your support. So I shall express my gratitude through action instead. No matter where you decide to go, I will be there, guarding your back. Yep. Of course this one was a cutscene. When Minfilia entrusted me with her power, she warned me that no matter how strong you became, you can still fall victim to despair. You can still feel powerless. And she was right. After you collapsed at, on Mount Golg, my hands wouldn't stop shaking. If I made a mistake, if I failed to bind the light within you, I was terrified you would die. Even now, you could be moments from turning, and I wouldn't know how to save you. You, Thancred, the others, you've all been there when I needed help. Minfilia surrendered her life to me, her legacy. I should be ready to do the same for you, and I want to, I do, but I just... I'm not good enough. She told me to follow your example, and I've tried. I've really tried. <sighs> then you shouldn't hang your head. I'm not asking to be saved. That's a tough one. Because I'm not asking to be saved is like saying I'm willing to make this sacrifice. And then there's, then you shouldn't hang your head. 
which doesn't seem to be as powerful. But the thing is, to say I'm not asking to be saved, to say that I'm willing to sacrifice myself for this, is not something... I mean, they all just said, like, their goal is to get us out of this alive. And I think in a way to say that kind of, I mean, it's, I'm not asking to be saved. It's like, not only am I willing to be sacrificed, but I'm expecting to sacrifice myself for this. Seems to kind of go against what everybody else is fighting for. Obviously, you'd be willing to do it, but, you know, to sacrifice yourself, but to say that I have no intentions of being saved, I think, is not the right thing to say at this moment. So I'm going to go with the first one. Maybe overanalyzing, overthinking all this, but... I shouldn't? And I think the I shouldn't hang your head is to essentially say then don't give up yet. Keep going. Keep fighting. Fate can be cruel, but a smile better suits a hero. There it is. Damn it. <laughs> we must all keep looking forward like the heroes who never gave up hope for this world. God, both of them are, are good. And it's funny, I think when the first time I came through this, I didn't remember the smile better suits a hero. Like, I, I may have recognized the line, but I didn't recall who it came from. Because, as I've mentioned before, obviously much earlier um, in this playthrough, that uh, Horshafont didn't grab me the first time through. And I think even since then, the only reason he's grabbed me so much is because of everybody else's attachment to him. I think just eventually he grew on me because of that. But, you know, I think the first time through it was just... Like, I didn't dislike the character, but he wasn't one that really grabbed me. Um... I gotta be honest, I, I know that the go-to one is probably the first one. But that one is kind of a... Again, like, it's not saying keep going, keep fighting. It's just... It's like saying, yeah, this sucks, but just... Almost kind of fake it till you make it is basically what I'm gathering it says. Um... Where I kind of like the, the, the second one more. There's more, again, gave up hope. Or never gave up hope. It's, there's more hope in it, I think. So I'm going to go with that one. I know it's blasphemous, but... <laughs> to be honest, I connect more with Ardbert than I than I do Horshafont. Again, as much as I like Horshafont, it... Just saying, it's personally. I'm not hurt. I'm not sure who you. Actually, never mind. I think the answer might be different for all of us. Yeah, I guess she doesn't really know about Ardbert and all them either. Her response is probably the same regardless, but yeah, she wouldn't, because I was like, wait, how don't you know about, you know, the Warriors of Light here? Um, but certainly she doesn't have the, the connection to them, like even, you know, the other Scions do. No, nothing will come of brooding here in self-pity. I've made my decision, Lavenza. I'm going with you.
See, and now you know why I have, as much as I enjoy playing games with dialogue choices, I have a hard time playing them too because <laughs> I'm always like over analyzing and And then so often the choices will bring about a response I was not like intending, you know, clearly like I was thinking, oh, this is kind of a joke or whatever. And then they took it really seriously. And it's like, oh, maybe, you know, the tone wasn't what I thought it would be anyway. Welcome to the capital. All visitors must present an official writ of permission before admittance will be granted. Here you go. Your documents appear to be in order. You may proceed into the capital, but any guests you may choose to bring with you must remain in your vicinity at all times. Easy enough. And this is, this is most definitely voiced. This really is unacceptable. I gave you very specific instructions. Emmett Selk. Of course. Who did you think it would be? My invitation was for an abomination, ripe with the power to bring about the world's annihilation. Not this half-broken thing. Whatever am I to do with you? And I see you insist on keeping the same familiar company. Are you so lost without them? It is not she who is lost without the familiar. Not content with remaking an entire city, you aim to fill it with the reconstituted souls of the dead. I may have gotten a little carried away in my attention to detail, added a few unnecessary flourishes. <laughs> well, there's no point trying to hide it. Yes. Once the rejoining of worlds is complete, Zodiac will regain his full strength and shatter his prison. Then we shall offer up the Source's remaining inhabitants in sacrifice, that we might resurrect our brethren who died to bring Zodiac into existence. But what was it that you came here to do exactly? We came here to stop you. We came here for the Exarch. I mean, both? Um. I think the more pressing matter is to... To stop him, though. And by way of stopping him. One last do-or-die attempt to foil my plans before your mind dissolves into madness. How very, very heroic of you. In every single age, there is always someone who wants to stand up to the evil Asians. Always the same arrogance. The same insistence that the world belongs to them, as if theirs were the only rightful claim, theirs the only existence worthy of preservation. Even now, after everything, you refuse to see reason. You think it unfair that you are subject to suffering? That your lives will be sacrificed for the ancients? Look at me! I have lived a thousand, thousand of your lives. 
I have broken bread with you. Fought with you, grown ill, grown old, sired children, and yes, welcomed death's sweet embrace. For eons have I measured your worth and found you wanting. Too weak and feeble-minded to serve as stewards of any star. Have your recent spats with Vorthri and his Sin Eaters taught you nothing? Have you not learned that your ignorance and frailty beget only endless misery? How long do you mean to perpetuate this farce? How much more must I endure your bumbling interference? Let us imagine that the laws of reality are again undone and the world faces true annihilation. Do you honestly believe that half your number would sacrifice themselves to save the other? Of course they wouldn't! And if you had witnessed history unfold as I had, you would reach the same conclusion. You cannot be entrusted with our legacy. I will bring back our brethren, our friends, our loved ones. The world belongs to us and us alone. What you got to say, Alfie? Emmett Selk! We understand, truly, but it makes no difference. The ones you love are in the past, while ours are here in the present. One day, we too will be ashes and dust, but not today. Our time is not yet finished. We share your conviction, and that is why we will not abandon our course. You think us the same? You think your tattered soul of equal worth to those I lost? Then come. Earn your place. Prove yourselves worthy to inherit this star. One hell of an invitation. <laughs> era at the beginning of our great work. A fitting backdrop for your final judgment. I shall wait within, but do not spend too much time on your preparations. There's no telling how much longer the guest of honor will last. I'm actually curious how or what would have been said if I had chosen like we're here to to save the Exarch. 
I'm pretty sure I said that the first time through. Because there was no mention of him. But with um, uh, Emmett, like I know some people just still cannot like empathize with him at all, and he's just a straight villain, and that's that's it. But to me, I really do empathize with him, and I get where he's coming from. You know, to him, everything is just. It's broken, it's shattered, it's incomplete. It's not the way it should be. Um, and then, you know, even... That's just from a logical perspective. You know, the world is, is shattered. The people are shattered. They are broken. Um, and they should be put back together. And it, that's not to say the emotional... Um, impact of it all too you know wanting to be back with with those people that that you miss but at the same time again from our own perspective your people gave themselves willingly you know for salvation or whatever and eventually there were two sides of your own people you know one that wanted to then sacrifice more of their own people you know to keep things as they were or whatever and another side that wanted to sacrifice themselves to you know to keep things I guess as they are now for you know for the for the new people which you can then project onto us because I think that was all before the shattering um, but that idea that those who come after are the rightful heirs to the star or whatever and um, and then of course just our own um, drive to survive or whatever um, I don't know it, to me it's like if I was an Asian, I could totally see just yeah continuing on with what the Asians are planning but since we're not and you know we're in the role of well I mean I guess technically we are just we're a shattered Asian. um or I guess not an Asian, but a shattered ancient I guess more technically. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. Like, I see both sides, but, you know, of course, I'm going to fight for the side that I'm on. <laughs> anyway, let us, let us do this. I can feel it beyond the flames. A darkness waiting to swallow our light. Wherever you are, Minfilia, watch over us and guide our steps. I reasoned that Emmett Selk would not harm the Exarch until he had learned the uh, tower's secrets, but his parting words suggest otherwise. Let us make haste. Your friend may not have the luxury of decades to wait for you this time. Is she speaking of his, um, the guest of honor comment? Which at first I took as Graha, but then I was like, well, or is he talking about us? That we don't have that much time. Either way. I won't ask you to hold back. That time is long past. I'll just try to snuff out the worst of the embers before they reach you. Just say the word, Lavenza. However harrowing the scenes that await us, they will not sway us from our course.
Ready when you are, Lavenza. If it's proof he wants, he'll uh, we'll give him a fight that, uh, the likes of which he's never seen. In those final days, tis said that monstrous beasts were set loose in the city. Terrors made flesh by sorceries run rampant. If Emmett Selk hath been faithful in his reconstruction, then we must be prepared to face many such abominations. Indeed. Actually, I think I gotta go with this. Ooh, I don't know though. I feel I gotta take Reem. And I wanna take Alize for what she had said earlier. And Alphano. But I wanna take Yastola just because she's. She is ultimate waifu. Um. But I think she'll she'll be around, but I just I know Reen wanted go? to be useful. So here we go. Take it taking all the kids. <laughs> Fighting the end of the world with children at my back. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. Tonight's stream was phenomenal. <laughs> uh, we did actually manage to finish up 5.0 tonight. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's great. Um, obviously, as usual, in the credits for 5.0 will be kind of my review. So look forward to that. Um, but yeah, I love it. I mean, there's a reason why Shadowbringers is as amazing as it is. And I personally think it's from the uh, content that's in these videos. Uh, but yeah, and then uh, next up will be the very tiny little uh, level 80 Dark Knight quest. And then we'll be moving on to the patch content, which I'm looking forward to. So hopefully you are as well. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to come join me live, the link to my Twitch is in the description down below. Thank you again for watching, and you have a good one.